Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. While certain famous classic beat em up franchises such as Streets of Rage arguably have a perfect track record when it comes to delivering high quality games in the series, rather than take a break when the audience has seemingly had enough, other brawler properties have attempted to change direction, often failing in the process. All we have to do is look at Final Fight Revenge and Final Fight Streetwise to see how one of Capcom's greats was driven into the ground. But what about Golden Axe, the subject of this video? Well, moving past the early beat-em-ups in the series, Sega did attempt to change direction with the Golden Axe brand, resulting in non-brawlers such as Golden Axe Warrior, Axe Battler and the fighting game known as Golden Axe The Duel. But all of these affairs failed to receive the same acclaim and critical success as the 1989 original. But in 2003, gamers would finally be treated to a full-blown remake of that classic game featuring all new graphics. Unfortunately though, this game would look uglier than we could possibly have imagined, perhaps even functioning as the worst Golden Axe game ever made. So today, let's look at this game, why most people aren't even aware it exists, and how it would bastardise an all-time great. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the ugly story of Golden Axe for PlayStation 2. Yeah! This video is brought to you by Manscaped.com. It's a new year, which means a new you. And feeling your best always starts with looking your best, which is where our friends over at Manscaped.com come in, who are available for all of your male grooming needs, yeah. There's a lot to fall in love with when it comes to Manscaped.com, including the Performance Package 4.0, your all-in-one head-to-toe grooming kit, so let's check it out. My favourite product in the kit is the Lawnmower 4.0 Cordless Waterproof Body Trimmer. Yes, and this is great for beard maintenance, but this trimmer is specifically designed with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts on the most sensitive areas of your body. That's not all, the Performance Package 4.0 is full of a range of wonderful gifts, such as the Manscaped Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, and the Manscaped Crop Reviver Refreshing Ball Toner. And as you can imagine, products such as this will ensure that you do not get smelly, sweaty, disgusting balls. What a wonderful world we now live in. With products like these, you'll be ready wherever the night takes you. <laughs> Sick of your wife and your girlfriends moaning and whinging that your unruly nose hair is getting in the way when going in for a kiss? Well, now that's no longer a problem, thanks to the amazing Manscaped Weed Whacker for all of your ear and nose trimming needs. Manscaped is no longer just for your below the waist knees either, as now you get the Shears 2.0 Luxury 6 Piece Stainless Steel Now Kit. Wah wah wee wah. For a limited time, when you order the Performance Package 4.0, you get the Shed Travel Bag and you get these anti chafing boxer briefs. Wow! So whatever your relationship status is at this Valentine's Day, remember to take care down there with Manscaped. Make this Valentine's Day extra special and get the gift you and your partner will both love. Don't wait, go to manscaped.com and use my promo code TOPHAT to get 20% off plus free international shipping plus two free gifts. Video games of a 16-bit era. There is no doubt that so many of these greats all have a very distinct flavour. With much of a sprite based pixel artwork and animations in the games still holding up incredibly well. The Sega Mega Drive's Golden Axe and Streets of Rage trilogy are amongst these many celebrated games. With while the modern Streets of Rage 4 title receiving mostly praise on release, the main criticism that many people would hold would be that the game's artwork would not be faithful to the originals. Games with these iconic beat em ups graphical styles absolutely scream high quality brawler. So if this is the case, then why on earth did Sega choose to create such a classic Sega Mega Drive game, but instead featuring some of the ugliest and unnecessary polygons ever created? Golden Axe for PlayStation 2 is a crime against retro gaming, 
and is evidence that people were so obsessed with the modern graphics of the new millennium that companies would redesign perfectly good classics just so that they could continue to release new takes on some of the all-time greats, just instead with graphics that age worse than last week's milk. To fully grasp how Golgnax got beaten with an ugly stick, we first need to look at Sega Ages games, a series of ports, remakes and compilations that would be published by Sega. Early entries in the series consisted of Sega Arcade and home console games, typically from the Mega Drive and Master System, so that these games could be experienced on the Sega Saturn. The first Sega Ages was released on the Saturn in 1996, but the series would later continue on the Sony PlayStation 2, after Sega had left the console market. These games on the PS2 were known as Sega Ages 2500 games, which while sounding rather random at first, actually relates to the games at the time bargain bucket price point of only 2500 yen a pop. These titles would usually feature singular games alongside extras such as remakes or developer info, then sold at low price points exclusively in Japan. So not only were Sega trying to remake some of their greatest video games of all time, but they were doing so on shoestring budgets, which should instantly, in my opinion, allow us to hear alarm bells ringing in our heads. The idea for creating such abominations came about as a result of a company known as D3 Publishers, who had a track record from turning a profit on their simple budget title video game series. The success they had would lead to Sega and D3 teaming up to form a new subsidiary in 2003 known as 3D Ages, with the sole goal of creating games for the 2500 series. What is quite scary is that although we saw what they did to so many classics, bastardised through this subsidiary, the original plan was to make even more abominable budget 3D versions of legendary games, with Streets of Rage set to be given the same abuse that Golden Axe was sadly subjected to. But thankfully, after just a couple of years, 3D ages were disbanded and fully absorbed into Sega, leading to the end of this abysmal, almost offensive practice. As for the budget 2003 remake of Golden Axe, aka Sega Ages 2500 Volume 5, players powering on this game will get an opening cutscene explaining the legend of the Golden Axe and how Death Adder had taken over the kingdom. After witnessing a new title screen, gamers can choose which of the three iconic warriors they are opting to play as, with Axe Battler, Tyrus Flare and Gilius Thunderhead of course all seeing a return. When the main gameplay in this beat em up starts, players will instantly notice how ugly this game looks, even by PlayStation 2 standards. While PlayStation 2 games in general look absolutely terrible compared to more modern games, Golden Axe for the system would not even look impressive even if it had seen release on the original PlayStation instead. The graphics really are that rudimentary when it comes to this Tesco value game. Even more shockingly, it is not just the aesthetics that have taken a hit either, as the gameplay itself has also been drastically changed, and not for the better. The biggest change is rather than being able to move up, down, left and right, players can also walk diagonally in all directions, with it being irritating to time even when trying to connect hits with opponents, as it can be difficult to line up your shots. Everything about this game is considerably uglier than anything that had been offered from the Golden Axe universe prior. The original sprite based Golden Axe, whether it be in the arcades or on the Mega Drive, was a bold, vivid game with beautiful artwork that popped. This travesty on the other hand looks like a poorly made indie mobile game and plays like one too. Even the characters life bars look ridiculous, like look at the characters faces, what kind of graphics do you call this? And this game was a title when games like Final Fantasy X were already on the hardware, so there was no excuse for it to look this bad. While there is a lot we can easily bash about this game, one thing I can compliment is the game's music, with wonderful orchestral sounding rearrangements of all of the classic tracks from the iconic original. The music in the original arcade game and Mega Drive certainly are both timeless pieces of music, but to be fair to this bargain bucket game, the soundtrack in this one offers a great alternative on a more modern system, so at least there was that. Still on the subject of things I liked, I did like some of the panning shots when the fighters are resting around the campfire between stages, as for a split moment, it does remind you that you are playing a game from 2003, rather than one from 1995 and around the birth of a Sony PlayStation. Other cutscenes are though just further illustrate how poor in places this game is, especially prior to some of the game's boss fights. Like if you think playable characters look awful zoomed out and in combat, it is nothing compared to how hideous they look when we get more close-up shots. Like look at the state of poor Tyrus Flair here, 
This is ludicrous. The character models look as bad as they do in Goldeneye. If Paul Whitehouse was here, he would tell them that they offend his mirror. The most puzzling things about these Sega Ages games to me is why on earth Sega bothered to make these ugly polygonal affairs in the first place and simply just not give gamers the opportunity to buy the original game standalone for the PS2 instead. The purchase would have certainly been better value for money than this absolute embarrassment to humanity. Each stage from the original game has been unlovingly recreated and bastardised into 3D polygonal shame. I mean, I don't know what else I have left to say about this one, other than the fact that players have the opportunity to live out every moment from a classic game within this uncanny nightmare. To refer to this as an enhanced remake would be a total insult to the game's source material. The hope would be, with games like this Golden Axe remake, that Sega hoped that most idiotic gamers from the period would buy into crap like this, purely on the basis that they believed 3D to be superior, no matter how great the original artwork in the games may have been. The logic was shove some polygons in and new appeal would be instilled. The truth of the matter is, though, those who were into more modern games were not necessarily there for the polygon graphics in the first place, even if they may have thought so at the time. In reality, they were simply enjoying longer, more complicated games. So even if the graphics for a Golden Axe remake had featured the most awesome looking polygons ever conceived, the quick fire arcade action gameplay would still not have appealed to the core gamer demo. To make matters even worse, of course retro gamers would show little interest in this crap either. And why play a game that features horrible polygons when the original version of the game was beautiful to begin with? This half-baked plan makes no sense at all on any level, even if the games were available at a cheap price point. While gamers could buy a standalone copy of this game in Japan, luckily for Western gamers players would not have the misfortune of accidentally making the same terrible purchase. According to Hardcore Gaming 101, Sony Computer Entertainment America would never let Sega publish the games individually like they had in Japan. Although, looking at the cancellation of Autobeast for the PlayStation 2 in the region, they would give the official reason that Sega is more particular about the titles it ships to the US. Which would suggest that the Golden Axe game was just considered too poor of a quality to even market as a standalone game stateside. Instead, the game licensed to Conspiracy Entertainment to potentially place in multi-game compilations, alongside other horrible 3D Ages games. But apparently, even they didn't have the balls to put this terrible game amongst one of their collections. Since they did nothing with it, Sega just reclaimed and released their own compilation in the West as part of a selection of games named the Sega Classic Collection. Perhaps one of the most misleading titles ever given to a video game in history, as there certainly were not any classics to be found on these discs. Still hilariously, while the disc has a total of 9 3D remakes, it was released for just $20, meaning that even Sega could not justify gamers paying more than just over $2 a pop for each of these embarrassing abominations. Shockingly, on the other hand, Japanese gamers were given a far worse deal, as for masochists who wanted to experience all of these turds, they would have to pay over $150 for the collection, so $20 is not bad at all in comparison. At least though, most Japanese gamers were not dumb enough to invest in these products, meaning they save the rest of the world from ever having to witness classics like Streets of Rage from ever seeing this ghastly treatment. So thank you for that, Japanese gaming public. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of the ugly Golden Axe remake for the Sony PlayStation 2. Be sure to let me know in the comments what you thought of today's video and which video game I should cover next. Should I pluck up the courage to cover the Xbox 360's Golden Axe game? Let me know down below. Make sure you like this video, subscribe and ring that notification bell to ensure that going forward you are notified whenever I upload a video. I regularly provide in-depth coverage on beat-em-ups, fighting games, wrestling titles and much more. All of this is partially possible due to the small but loyal group of devotees who go just that one step further and support what they do on Patreon. This time of year is always tough revenue-wise for us full-time YouTube folks, so huge thank you for sticking around when earnings are at their lowest. You lot are legendary, like the 1989 Golden Axe game, not this one. Yeah! 
Speaking of these people, special shout outs go out to a murder of crows, Carl Johnson, Heo Paulo Lopez, Nostalgia Collector, Ben Haradine, Corey Imarsh Senior, Ron Dinch, Evan Baller, Philip Manth, Azarakai, Jotkin Varela, Michael Cullix, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Princess Zana, Daniel Daly, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Gary Pinkett, ECU Professor, Johnny Holly, August Piazza, Justin Wang, Capcom vs. SNK, Herbis Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Michael Hall, Sang He, Norma Stitz, Langston Miller Noob, Sarah Powell, Blay McRenee, Marvin Liga. TOG Driver, Lewis Fiant, John Bates, David Barr, Chris Fisk, Rick67, Antonio Rodriguez, Craig Jenkins, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs my work on the Patreon platform. Muchas gracias, senoritas.